I've been looking forward to making this video because we're going to investigate the different options for the placement of insulation in a concrete slab for a garden room in the UK. It's a bit of a geeky video, but hopefully there'll be some interesting takeaways for everyone. Okay, let's start by defining the types of insulation that are suitable for concrete slabs. Obviously we need something that is pretty rigid because it needs to support the concrete above it or be solid enough to walk on. So the first option is polystyrene. This doesn't have a particularly high R value, so in the roof and walls where we're trying to keep the thickness down, polystyrene isn't a great option. But as long as you're happy to dig down far enough, you can make up for the low R value with extra thickness, so it's worth considering. More usual though is the use of PIR or phenolic board, which I've used extensively in my build and you should be familiar with. So what are the options for placing this insulation in a concrete slab? The first method is to place the insulation above the hard core with a concrete uppermost. This has the most thermal mass, which we'll explore in a minute. The second reverses the insulation and concrete, and a solid floor is created by a top layer of screed, which for the purpose of this video is essentially like a smoother concrete. So this has some thermal mass, but less than the first. And the third simply has a floating chipboard floor on top of the insulation and next to no thermal mass. So thermal mass is the ability of a material to absorb and store heat energy and then radiate it back out, kind of like a thermal battery. Materials that have a high thermal mass tend to be high density, like concrete, and lightweight materials like insulation and timber have low thermal mass, but of course are much better insulators. A great example of somewhere with huge thermal mass is a cave. If you go deep enough into any cave, the temperature changes very little between day and night or summer and winter, and that's because it's surrounded by rock with very high thermal mass. Bilbo Baggins' Hobbit Hole will have worked in a very similar way, and in fact there are earth homes that make use of thermal mass too. So essentially, thermal mass moderates the temperature and reduces temperature fluctuations. But why is this useful? Well, somewhere like in the southwestern United States, with desert-like conditions characterised by very hot summer days and cool nights, thermal mass in a house will store the heat of the day, preventing the house becoming too hot, and then radiate it back out overnight, keeping the house warm. Concrete is great for this because it has a lag time of around 7 hours. So you might have thought that the overhang on a garden room is just for show, but it does serve a purpose. During summer, when the sun is high in the sky, the overhang shadows the windows, but in winter, when the sun is lower, it allows the sun to work its magic on the concrete slab. That's why in places like Australia, they have much bigger roof overhangs than we do in the UK. So thermal mass sounds pretty great. Does this mean we should be opting for the concrete on top kind of slab here? Mm, I'd suggest not, and that's because we already have the largest thermal mass working for us already. Yep, the ocean and humidity it gives off means that we already have a moderate climate without large swings in temperature. That said, having some thermal mass can still be a good thing, so in a house extension, I'd go for the middle option, which also has the benefit of allowing you to install underfloor heating pipes within the screed. But for a garden room, I'd probably lean towards the third option with practically no thermal mass, and this is because a garden room tends to be used sporadically, and we only want to heat the room when we're in it, and most importantly, we want it to heat up quickly. If you have a lot of thermal mass, that will suck up a lot of the heat before the air temperature in the room warms up, whereas a building with a lack of thermal mass will be much more responsive, i.e. it will heat up quickly, but will also cool down quicker as well. Not too fast though, because we've mitigated the worst effects of the heat loss with insulation and with a vapour barrier to increase air tightness. So what else is different between these options? Linking back to the video about reducing the depth of a timber floor to maximise ceiling height, options 1 and 2 are clearly the best for this purpose, as you'll only use a few centimetres to get to your finished floor. Option 3 will end up being a bit higher, but that can be a good thing, as with some doors, the sill and the threshold together mean you have to step over them. Mine came to about 10cm above the ply, so with option 3, you can lay down 50mm insulation, 80mm chipboard, underlay and flooring, and come out almost level with the top of the door threshold, so that's a bonus. Option 3 is also good if you have an existing concrete base that you want to build on, but you also want to insulate it. I often get asked if an insulated timber floor should be built on top of the existing slab, and I can't see the point. This is a much easier, cheaper, and more effective way. The last advantage is that you only have to think about buying insulation at the same time as when you're insulating your roof and walls, rather than being one of the first things you need to do, so this way you can source all your insulation in one go. Alright, that's a wrap for this one. In conclusion, all of these options will be fine, but I'd go for number three. If you want to check out Nick's build, he did just that. You can see that he has a DPM on top of the concrete, followed by insulation, then chipboard, with flooring on top. While you're there, we've got some new ones, so it's well worth checking out Joff's, Andrew's, and Chris's builds. I'll give you one more option. If you're trying to keep things really simple, you could forego any insulation and just have a concrete slab, but add some decent thermal underlay between the concrete and your finished floor. 
All right, I hope that was illuminating. Back to the main series on the next one. See you then.